Welcome to my week 8 battle of the VDL. This week, the Indianapolis Infernapes are taking on Kyrdis, coach of the Czech Cleavors. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make playoffs or not. I'm currently 12th overall. You need to be top 8 to make playoffs. Maybe if I win the next 3 with a good record, I have a chance to. I'm not sure. There's no way of knowing. So I'm still going to try like I have a chance in these last couple battles. Uh, there's this week and then 2 more weeks until playoffs. So let's take a look at my opponent's team. My opponent has Monkey Dory, Toxapex, Ogie Dogie, Iron Moth, Alolan Muck, Weezing, Crobat, Revavroom, Mega Beedrill, Drapion, and Ariados. Last week was the last week to do transactions, so I dropped Raticate and picked back up Morgrem, but I also decided to drop Incineroar and pick up Chi Yu. I said early on I didn't want Chi Yu because it was really one dimensional, but I ended up not using Incineroar as much as I thought just because I also have another Intimidator in Quillfish, and Quillfish is just better overall. It has some more bulk with the Eviolite and also has less weaknesses. So when looking at my opponent's team, I realized that obviously it's mono poison, so they have a huge ground weakness besides the Crobat and the Weezing with Levitate, and then any air balloon users they have. So the first thing I decided to get around those ground immunities so that Ting Lu can do as much damage as possible was Gravity. There's only three Dark types in the game that learn Gravity, RCS Dark, Koopa Unbound, and Sableye. So my strategy this week is to use Gravity on Sableye and then go into Ting Lu and do as much damage as possible. So to start it off, we have Samurai with a Focus Ash. This is the guaranteed lead. Ceaseless Edge is to set up spikes. They do have ways to get rid of them in Crobat or Weezing using Defog. Actually, I scratched that. Normal Weezing doesn't get Defog, so just Crobat. In case there's something I don't want to stay in against on the lead matchup, like Mega Beanstrill or something like that, I have Flip Turn and then Aqua Jet to pick anything off. I'm kind of upset about not having Aqua Jet last week, so I'm putting it on this week. And then Encore to lock in any setup or Toxapex if it tries to go for Recover or anything like that. Next up, I have King Gambit. It. I'm using a rock polish set like I did the first week because after a rock polish I can outspeed the entire team if they're not choice scarf holding a chocolateberry just because there's a few fighting moves that are gonna come out like monkey Dory has focus blast Ogie Dogie has fighting stab and then Muckalola also gets drain punch running knockoff sucker punch iron head and rock polish at the end of the game if all of my other Pokemon are dead this is gonna do a ton of damage with the supreme overlord but hopefully we don't get to that point because the ting loose set that I'm bringing today next up we have Morgrim. so after the Samurai gets spikes up I want to go out into Morgrem and get up both a light screen and a reflect and then parting shot out. Taunt is the last move just in case anything tries to set up or defog to remove our screens and hazards. Skipping ahead a little bit, we have more Pico here. I'm bringing this just because Ariados does have sticky webs, which I don't really necessarily want to deal with, as well as just toxic spikes in general because this is a mono poison team. I would rather not have my team be poisoned. So I have the heavy duty boots to ignore the hazards with rapid spin. And then I have Aura Wheel. There's no electric immunity, so when it's an electric move, it's going to do decent damage. When it's dark, I won't be able to hit like the Ogie Dogie and stuff, but I'm not as worried about that. I have Parting Shot to switch out and then again Taunt to stop maybe potential Toxic Spikes or anything like that. Now here's what I'm excited for. I have Sableye with Gravity, Recover, Thunder Wave, and Mud Slap holding the Eject button. So once Samurai gets the spikes up and Morgrem gets up screens, I go Sableye, set up the gravity, take a hit, which the eject button will then switch me out. I go into Ting Lu, who is then choice banded, and I can click Earthquake uninterrupted for four turns. And with the screens up, this thing is not going to be taking that much damage as long as it doesn't get toxic, which is why I have more Pico to remove the toxic spikes. And then in case there's a point where I don't have the gravity up, I have Stone Edge to hit the Crobat, and then Whirlwind and Taunt are just in case I get knocked off. There were no other useful moves that I needed to put on Ting Lu. Also, my last move on Sableye was Mud Slap just to be annoying, and I didn't want to run a Psychic move because uh, Lolan Buck and Drapion are already going to want to switch into this to ignore Prankster moves. That is the team. If you enjoy the battle, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in just a second. All right, here we are with the battle. My opponent brings Mega Beedrill, Crobat, Ogie Dogie, Iron Moth, Weezing, and Drapion. All right, we're going to lead Samurai just like I planned. They lead Weezing, so it's pretty free sleeves. Ceaseless Edge. I'm not too worried if I get Will-O-Wisp, because I'm only here to get Spikes up. So, I'm going to go for that. Doesn't do much. They go right for the Will-O-Wisp. I'm going to Encore them into that, just because I don't want any Toxic Spikes going up or anything. Alright, so we get that off. They're definitely going to switch out here, so I could flip turn here. One spike is enough just because it breaks sashes and stuff. I wasn't really trying to hit like a specific range with it. So I'm going to flip turn here as they switch out. Okay, they go Crobat. Oh, I get a crit, so 
Little extra damage, not bad. All right, that's an offensive Crobat as well. I'm going to go Morgrem and get up my screens here and just start to do my plan where I bring out Sableye and then to Tinglu. Go for the Reflect first because it's probably physical if I had to guess. They might be fearing a Thunder Wave here, which they actually don't have any switching to besides Drapion, which is just immune to all Prankster moves. Okay, they just go for the Defog here, so I'm going to immediately Taunt to stop that. They go for the U-turn, they show that they are Life Orb. I can just set up another layer of screens on whatever comes in. Yeah, I'm going to set up a Reflect on the Speed Drill. It can do a lot here with Poison Jab, might kill. Goes for x -Zer. that doesn't do enough, so now I can get up a Light Screen here. Or I could also Parting Shot out into Sableye in case they try to go for Brick Break, which I kind of like that play. Yeah, I'm going to Parting Shot out into Sableye. Ooh, that's kind of risky, though, now that I'm thinking about it, because it could pop the Eject button. I don't want to risk it, so I'm going to go Samurott here. They go for U-Turn, so I'm glad that I did not go into Sableye there, because that would have popped the Eject button, and then I couldn't have had that free switch to Tinglu. I just so instinctively wanted to go Sableye on a fighting move. I It's just so normal for me. Crobat comes out, and I do die to any move that it wants to go for here, so I'm just going to Aqua Jet to get a little bit of chip damage off. I could also Encore if they decide to Roost, which I think is a little bit better than getting any chip damage off here. And they leech life. Okay, so they get the kill on us here. I'm going to go Sableye and go for the gravity now. They might U-turn. They might hard switch. They could also defog. But I think gravity is just a good play here. And if they don't pop the eject back uh, button now, I can use it later on. So I'm going to go for the gravity. They U-turn out. That is perfect. That pops my eject button. And I'm going to go Ting Lu. And I don't think they switch out now. No, they don't. So Earthquake just tears through this team now. Nothing can take a choice banded Earthquake, especially um, since the gravity's up. Weezing can't switch in, Crobat doesn't take it. I don't think Ogie Dogie's bulky enough. I was nervous that this wasn't going to work. I'm glad that they went for the U-turn there. A lot of the heat stuff that I've tried to bring so far hasn't worked. Like, both times that I brought Z Parting Shot, it hasn't worked yet, so I'm, I'm very glad this did. Alright, they go for the Leech Life. That does almost nothing with the Reflect Up. And the Earthquake is going to just take down the Crobat here. And I'm assuming the next three hits are just going to take down everything. And with how little damage I took there, I might have the opportunity to set up another Gravity and just do this again. Mega Beedrill comes out. It does about 30% with x -Zer or U-Turn. So I'm just going to continue. Oh, Brick Break. Okay, Smart gets rid of my Reflect. So I'm going to take a little bit more damage from the Ogie Dogie coming out here. But I still don't think it KOs me. This is working out great. My opponent really doesn't know what to do here. Ogie Dogie comes out. I take I take a decent amount from Drain Punch. I don't know if this thing gets close combat. That might actually be enough. I'm not sure. We'll see here. Close combat comes out. It does kill me. Okay, so we're uh, we're not quite done here yet. I'm going to go directly into Sableye here. And I'm going to Mud Slap. Just whatever wants to come out here. Because Drapion might come out here. Just since it's immune to uh, any like prankster like Thunder Wave or anything. Yep, exactly. Let's lower that accuracy. Get out of here. Morpico is pretty useless here at this point. Since King Gambit is immune to Toxic Spikes. And they don't have sticky webs so i think i just go that here i kind of want to preserve my sableye just for like thunder wave on the iron moth yeah i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go more pico here Ooh, leech life does, does quite a lot i'm gonna parting shot out here since it's not immune to this one since it's not prankster dark types being immune to prankster is one of those like weird little things that they did that's just super annoying to have to deal with all right, Weezing comes out here. I'm going to go to Morgram, and I'm going to taunt this. I want to be able to set up King Gambit without getting burned. So we're going to go for taunt here. They go for Sludge Wave, which is actually perfect because that takes me down here, and I have a free switch out into King Gambit, and I can easily set up a Rock Polish now. And I might actually have to set up two due to the Iron Moth, but they can't burn me. Flamethrower doesn't really do a lot. I could actually take the opportunity to maybe set up two Rock Polishes. We'll see here, though. We're going to we're gonna set up one here and see what they do. Ting Lu going down to that Ogie Dogie is kind of unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Drapion comes out here. All right, so Earthquake doesn't even do half, and then Brick Break does even less. I, I, like, I need the Rock Polish up for the Iron Moth, but I don't know if I can chance it against this. I'm going to Iron Head once here, because it doesn't kill it either way, and if I get a flinch, I'm in a great position. I want to see what they want to do here as well. So I'm going to Iron Head. And we flinch. Oh, that's perfect, because now I can get up that second Rock Polish that I wanted to get up initially. That flinch was huge, Gambit. Oh my goodness. So we're going to set up that second Rock Polish so that Iron Moth cannot outspeed me. Alright, they go for Brick Break. Alright, 
We are now faster for sure. They had Choppleberry, which, er, no. That was me. Was it a speed tie? I'm confused on how they went first there. Maybe they're a choice scarf? I, I don't, hmm. I don't know, it must have been a speed tie. That's, that's interesting. But now, I don't have to worry. I outspeed it for sure. When I said Choppleberry, I was thinking Custap Berry. That was, I don't know, I'm super tired. Cause I, I went first, hit him with Iron Head and flinched him. And then the following turn, he went for Brick Brick. So it had to have been a speed tie. So it was definitely a choice Scarf Drapion. Now this is where I'm a tad worried because I don't KO it here with anything. So I kind of have to go for another Iron Head flinch, which is another 30% roll. I didn't think this was going to be this close. I really thought Ting Lu was going to put in a lot more work than it did. Uh, I have to go for the flinch here. That's my, my best out here. Let's see it. Come on, Gambit. Oh, and they crit. I don't I don't think I would have lived it either way, but that is that is quite unfortunate. I have to go Sableye here and Thunder Wave this, since it's uh, up in a speed boost, which I don't even know at that point if it would help me outspeed it. Okay, yeah, if I do Thunder Wave it, Morpico does outspeed, so I'm gonna Thunder Wave it here. Thank you for not missing Sableye. Also takes the hit. I'm gonna recover here, just seeing if they can full para maybe once. I'm gonna keep doing it, either until they kill me or they full para. I don't want to just, I can't just switch out into Morpico. Oh, they actually, interesting. Huh. All right. Weezing comes out here. I'm going to Thunder Wave this. Okay, we miss. Cool. Yeah, I don't take a lot from that. And I'd rather be poisoned from a Sludge Wave than get um, Toxic Chained by Dogi Dogi. So keep doing that, please. 12% is a lot more manageable. Okay, I'm going to recover here. And then I have to Gravity so I can start Mud Slapping. It was a good attempt. I, like I said at the beginning, I knew I'm not making playoffs and I did give this a good attempt. I think that uh, the gravity strat was really good. This, this Ogie Dogie is just doing some work. And now that I'm toxic chained, I'm definitely going down here. So I'm just going to uh, Thunder Wave here and call it. I'm not gonna keep trying to uh, to PP stall here. So dang, I uh, I thought I had that one, but again, it's it's all right. Gravity was a really cool tech. Ogie Dogie just uh, put a stop to it rather quickly. And I don't think I could have like done anything differently on the Ting Lu because it's just so slow. I had max HP. The Beedrill took down the Reflect, which was the best thing it could have done. I assumed it had that earlier in the battle. Uh, glad I didn't go out into it at that point, but that's all right. GG's. We have two more weeks of the VDL. Probably not making playoffs, so it'll just be the last two weeks. And then I have the PDL on the side. I don't know if I just said that on accident. I'm really tired. But uh, yeah, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys all later. Peace.